Hello everyone, this is Felix from GM Wolf, and welcome back to creating a car game in Game Maker Studio. Today we are going to be adding some car sounds and uh, adding some obstacles for the car to collide with. So for the car sounds, I just start with that. Um, we are going to be using a loop which I found on Open Game Art, and uh, you can find uh, that file um, in the description below. Uh, there will be a link to it. It is the third loop. So uh, once you downloaded that loop, you can click this button over here to add a sound. Uh, we're going to be using uh, uncompressed and not streamed. Um, over here we want it to be mono. Uh, we're going to stick with 16-bit and let's not change uh, any of those options either. So let's load in the sound over here. So I have it... Um, let's see somewhere here here oh it is the loop 2 and let's call it SND underscore um, car underscore engine and so this is the first sound we're going to implement uh, for during this tutorial what we're going to be uh, doing later on is adding more than just the engine sound so as you can see this uh, it sounds like this just like a, an engine and it loops perfectly. So let's go ahead inside our, our car object, go inside the create event and make it play the sound to start off with. And I'm actually going to create a new event for this just to keep things neat. So I'm going to call this sound. And so we're going to be having uh, audio underscore play underscore sound. And uh, the sound ID is SND underscore car underscore engine. <clears throat> the priority, let's just set it to 1, and it does loop. So this uh, this function here will actually play the sound in which you put. So uh, the priority is um, basically when you have too many sounds playing, uh, you know, you'll have to stop playing a sound. There's a limit to the number of sounds can play at the same time. And the priority is basically, this does exactly what it sounds like. Uh, something with a low priority or a high priority, I can't remember in which way it goes. Uh, we will not. Uh, we'll stop playing before something with a, a high priority, basically. And um, the loop will determine whether the car the sound does loop or not. So we want it to loop. We just we want it to you know play over and over again because that's how an engine works. So if we play press play now, uh, we'll have the exact same game as last time, but uh, we should have just a normal sound playing. And so here you go. However, as you can see, there's a problem. We have our car moving around. Uh, I mean, I quit this. We have our car moving around, but we don't have a uh, we don't have it changing sound. And um, to do this, we're going inside our step events. We're gonna go maybe here, uh, where we have our let's see RPMs, and just under here, or maybe yeah, just here, we're going to write. <clears throat> Sorry, audio underscore sound underscore pitch, and the index will be. Uh, let's actually go back inside our create event with this. Um, yes, the index refers to uh, this sound over here. So we need to store uh, this the index of this like this sound instance basically. Uh, inside a variable. So let's call this uh, engine import sound index. Here you go. So now uh, the index of the sound, so the so the instance of the sound, so you know you could have multiple, um, is equal to engine sound index. Well, you know what? And now in here, so we just have to say engine sound index, and now we set the pitch. So the pitch actually uh, has a range, and uh, yeah, so it, it there is no actual like range, but let's say that the range is zero and five because otherwise it's not really audible. Uh, so what we're gonna have is uh, our RPM. Now RPM is between zero and six thousand, something like that. So we're gonna divide that by maybe ten thousand. Now this has to be uh, tweaked a little, so. Um, in my other projects, 10,000 was about right, but that uh, it depends really uh, with your different 
games. It, um, it changes from project to project because some things change, you know, it's not exactly perfect most of the time. Uh, also, I'm not using exactly the same sound because I, I was using a sound which uh, is not actually Creative Commons and this one is, so let's just press up. And as you can see, it is way too low. So let's exit the game and divide it by 6,000 instead. So this is a bit of a trial and error. It is mostly hard to get right because uh, all of the sounds are different and you get different RPMs, etc. But as you can see now, we have a, a pretty decent sound. And now if I change my, um, let's see, my RPM when it gets to 6,000, it's still a bit too low. So, uh, actually the sound we have, the second car loop, is actually quite low. So, uh, let's divide it by maybe just 2,000. Uh, again, um, if you're using a different car sound, you'll have to tweak it yourself. It really depends um, on what sound you're using. As you can see now, now this is not quite right either. Yeah, so this wasn't really quite right. Um, our sound was, you know, getting high way too fast, etc. So what we're gonna do is actually take the square root of our RPM, and that should allow us to get a much nicer, uh, nicer curve. Now we need to actually divide by something much lower now. Um, Again, this step really depends on whether you have, on depending on the sound you have, and uh, with different sound you'll need different um, uh, different configurations. So again, now we're, div we're still dividing by way too much. So let's go back and dividing it only by twenty should be true. Now I could really, you know, stop the video here, find the exact configuration, but. But it is really quite hard to get the right thing. So let's divide this by 50. Uh, yeah, that, that we should be. We're getting a, a lot closer to the actual values we need. Um, so as you can see, we're getting much closer, and you can you can go ahead and, and find the perfect and find the perfect value for you. But it really. I might as well. Yes, uh, in case you didn't hear that because of uh, the sound difference, I'm not quite sure how I set it up. Uh, you have to go and tweak it yourself. As you can see, we got quite close. We're getting there. Uh, of course, you'll, you you may want to have different sounds for different you know gears, etc. Uh, you may even want different sounds for different revs. But, um, but uh, that really depends. Uh, on what sounds you're using, etc. For now, I'm going to leave it that like that because I don't want to spend this whole video tweaking this single value. Um, but I hope you get the gist on how to do this. Now, for the rest of this video, I'm actually going to disable the sound uh, by simply taking the volume all the way down over here because I just want to make sure you can hear me over the sound of the car uh, because um, I'm not quite sure how the sound is being... Uh, distributed with my recording. So now we want to add some uh, things to collide with. Now let's just go and create something very simple. Let's go ahead and create a sprite. Uh, let's make it quite rather big. Let's see. 256 by 128. And we're going to create some sort of little you know, block of houses. So we're just going to do it really roughly. You can spend a lot more time doing this if you like. But I'm just going to you know, do something like that maybe there you go and just show that this is a little 3d you know view from the top you can even you know you, you can take as much care as you want making this look nice uh, I'm just going to do this really quickly because I don't want to uh, spend too much time I should really have done this off camera but here you go so this is just gonna be you know uh, I don't know it's just a big block and let's call this SPR block and really this step is really really simple I just center it and let's create another object and call it obj underscore block. Uh, we want it to be visible. Uh, we don't have a parent. And let's make it uh, spr block the sprite. We want to use physics. We want it to be a box. Modify collision shape is fine. And the density of zero. Now this is very important. 
A density of zero will mean that your uh, object will not be able to move. Uh, a density of, you know, any density, even if you had a huge density of like a million, uh, you will still be able to move it eventually by keep on hitting it uh, repeatedly. Now, uh, this is not what we want. Uh, so when you set it to zero, Game Maker will understand that you want an infinitely large density, basically an immovable object, you know, like a house or, uh, you know, a tree that's planted in the ground. You don't want those to move. Uh, you may want them to move actually, but uh, for this tutorial we don't want them to move, so we're just going to set it to zero and press OK. So right now we're not going to collide with it, but eventually we're going to have a lot and a lot of different you know, obstacles, and we still want to collide with those, so let's create a new object and call it par underscore uh, physics. So this is going to be our parent physics object, and we're going to go inside and add an event, we're going to add a collision with itself, which is currently object six because we didn't press OK. And let's just add this icon right here and the code, the green uh, exclamation mark, and let's just write collide. So what this does over here is absolutely nothing. It's just there as a placeholder. Um, basically, and in case you didn't know, in, uh, in, in the game maker physics, which is box 2D, uh, in order to tell it to collide with something, uh, instead of just passing through, you need to have a collision event. So, um, and we don't need anything inside. However, if we just left nothing in and pressed OK, uh, the event would disappear. So we're adding uh, a collision event and adding just a random comment, which doesn't do, do anything. You could really call this anything you like, um, just to make sure the event still exists. Now, the reason we're making it collide with itself is that now if you take the car and has it, have set its parent to object 6 and the same with object block, now the object block will now inherit the event as well as the object car and so and since they're parents it will object car will be able to collect to collide sorry with object block uh, because of how parenting works uh, if you're unfamiliar with parenting I do have a video on it uh, and you can probably find it in my channel so if I press uh, OK on both of those now and I go and take the room over here I can now uh, let's see zoom out and I can take my object block and create myself uh, a few, you know, blocks like so. I can even stretch this one out. Uh, if I do so, um, it will also increase my performance as well. Uh, so I can do something like that maybe. And uh, let's add uh, some blocks over here. Let's add the block in. The, whoops. Let's add a block in the middle here and here. And now, if I save it and press play. I should be able to collide with those blocks and uh, bounce off them and whatnot. So as you can see, I'm colliding with it, and uh, I'm now stuck. Actually, oh yes, there is no, there is no backwards uh, on the car yet, which uh, we will add later when we add, um, you know, uh, when we go and improve the gears a little with uh, different sounds, etc. But now, if I, I can, I can, I can collide with the different objects as you can see, and I can't really go through, and. Uh, as you can see, I, still can, I can still barely move around, and that you know would be me skidding across the ground. Uh, but uh, yes, that's pretty much it for colliding with objects. As you can see, it's just really, really simple. Uh, if, say, you want an object that can move around, let's create another sprite for it really quickly as well. Let's make it, yeah, 32 by 32. Let's just make it a, a nice blue block for now. Uh, you could make it as a crate or something like that. Let's call it SPR underscore crate. Let's say you're making a crate. Uh, let's center it once again. We can just duplicate this block, select the new sprite, call it obj underscore create. Let's uh, make sure the collision shape is right. So drag this guy all over here. And inside density, let's set this to 0 0.2. Quite a fairly, a fairly uh, light crate, really. And uh, let's place them around here. So put one here, one here. Let's have some over here, like so. Nice. And uh, if you press OK and press play, we will now be able to collide with those crates. Now, if you want the crate to have friction, things like that, you'll just have to, you know, change this uh, yourself. Now, we do have a small problem, whereas uh, our concrete object is actually over everything else. So, um, to fix that, we're just going to give some depth to these objects. Maybe 10 should be enough. 
just to make sure that they actually lie bet uh, underneath uh, our other uh, our other objects. So the depth uh, is equal to the you know how far it is inside the screen. And as you can see now, all our objects are still in front of it, and we can collide with those crates uh, nicely. Now I'm, I got stuck again, but as you can see, the crates will collide wi with each other, etc. So that's it for this uh, tutorial. So it was quite short. I think we didn't add that much, but we do have now uh, a sound that changes with the speed of the car, which is quite nice. And we have uh, things we can collide with, and you can just create more and more of these uh, different collision objects as you please. You could even, you know, start creating some, uh, some I don't know, some people on the floor and have them die when you collide with them, whatever you like. So thanks for watching, guys. This has been it for creating a card game uh, episode five, I think, uh, which really isn't a lot. But um, I'll see you guys next time for some more, you know, car tutorials and uh, GM basics, etc. Please like and subscribe if you uh, want to see more. And I'll see you guys next time.